is going on, all my thick cheek people, my power cheek people? I um, I just got these new pair of Adidas joggers, joggers in the mail, and uh, they're a little tight around my cheeks. And uh, the reason for that could be the squats, or it could be the four bags of M and M's and four of the Dave's doubles I had from Wendy's. That is called emotional eating, folks. Look it up. So, yes, I'm back. I'm very excited. Got a lot of good things going on. Seriously, thank you, everybody, with the uh, subscribing, the liking, the commenting. You guys are a bunch of silly gooses. We have a good time, don't we? (laughs) So, I want to try and navigate properly through the cancel culture here's what i've noticed through having all you know the the gen z the millennials and i'm considered a late millennial you know so for me seeing a lot of the things that i've seen i wasn't raised a a very conventional way i have a kind of a different way to kind of coming about to what i am now And as does everybody, everybody's an individual, everybody has their own story, which means there's going to be a lot of opinions. Now, with what I've seen lately, most people lately aren't saying anything of substance because they're afraid to speak out because they're afraid to not be liked. In the spirit of that, in talking about cancel culture, we have to talk about another culture before that, and that is not everybody is going to like you. Not everybody is going to agree with you. Not everybody is going to think you're beautiful or handsome. Not everybody needs to be your friend, nor should you want them to be your friend. Because then you'll find you're going to just conform to other people's opinions. You're going to conform to other people's images of you. You're going to conform to everything maybe that you stand against. And then you'll find yourself very uh, depressed aimless, sad, and, and, and we have seen that. I've seen that now probably more than ever. Um, social media depression is a thing among a lot of Gen Z people because what they're doing is following other aimless people, people who post videos of themselves just staring into the camera uh, with their you know favorite filter on, just moving it around, and it's kind of crazy. The other thing that I've noticed too is um, the copying of things that don't require much skill and everybody's saying, you're awesome at it, you're doing great, and I have noticed that quite a bit. It seems like, hey, stand out, but not too much. Hey, you know, say, say something, but agree with me at the same time. And I'm sorry, you can't have both. So we have to address that before we address the cancel culture. So cancel culture has been something that's come about to what I've seen is to delete your past or to at least delete our past and how dangerous of a, of a game that is to delete the past, however ugly. This weekend, this was only three days ago, which is probably why I was emotionally eating. Who knows? So I got out of the car and I dropped my wallet. My wallet spills everywhere. I had all this, I had $250, $300 in cash in my wallet spilled out into, out, out into the ground, onto the pavement. I also had four debit cards spilled out right on the pavement. So I oh, get so pissed. I pick them up and I get in there. And I zip up my coat because it's freezing. It's freezing my ass off. Then I walk into the convenience store where I picked up water and I saw this energy drink that I liked. And then I saw the peanut M&Ms that have sealed that nail in my coffin. Got them. Got in my car. It's freezing. Got in my warm car. And it hit me. I made such a big deal out of so such frustration of dropping my wallet. I dropped money. I dropped achievements, my accounts, everything out of my wallet. Some people don't even have that. They don't they they have no money to drop. So I dropped my wallet and got pissed off about that. Then I walked into a convenience store. It's called a convenience store. Walked in, grabbed filtered, unparasitic, parasitic-free water. Then I grabbed a drink to give me energy. 
and a sweet snack for my fat hole. (laughs) Then zipped up my $400 coat up my neck to keep me warm as it's 10 degrees out and got into my warm car. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And it's, I've always been very appreciative. People are so unappreciative of all the things that we have. And we need to start recognizing that. That's a part of what's contributing to this type of cancel culture. It's contributing to this censorship. It's contributing. Because these generations, some, including my own, don't appreciate anything. We're so unimpressed. I, don't, I couldn't tell you how this mic works. I still don't know. But somebody made it, and somebody did it. There's somebody smart enough to make this. I'm not that person, but I can appreciate this. I bought all this stuff with my own money, my hard-earned money, my 15 you know, work-hour days money. Couldn't tell you how much. I can't tell you how this iPhone works, but it does. Somebody figured it out, and thank you for doing that. Thank you for all of these things. And I I get maybe too congratulatory. I get too wrapped up in being thankful. Maybe. I don't know. But it's helped me. It's helped me in my life become more appreciative of things. I think a lot of what's going on is you have a lot of young people looking for things to be outraged about, to be so angry about. That's what I think. Just part of it. Not all of it, but part of it. Cancel culture is a witch hunt, I think. It turns into finding the next thing to be upset about when really you don't have an awful lot to be upset about. So the three things that I I looked, the one which is the Dr. Seuss books, and there's six Dr. Seuss books that have images and they are racist and they are... um, so it's a long time ago. And to me, I don't think that these books should be canceled. They stopped production on these six books. To me, I don't think they should do that. I think they should keep them in there so we can see how far we've come. To me, I think that if you did read, and even if it was the person who's being offended, you can really look at that. Look how far we've come from that. We don't act like that. I actually think... It's good to keep them in. I'm more of like, hey, let's learn from the history instead of delete it or try to delete it or try to cancel it. Some people would have a good discussion on why they think it should be taken out. But in my opinion, I think it's a great lesson to be learned to see how far we've come. And we have come far. It's like if you, they, they, I believe they stopped production of them. Uh, but, you know, Dr. Zeus, everybody's got to chill out, is not canceled. He has plenty of great bangers of a book great books um but you know just those six ones um like i said they stopped production on those and um like i said although i do disagree with it and don't think it should be it's happening so the next one is space jam peppy le pew peppy le pew is a skunk pervy creepy skunk <laughs> i agree taking him out of the space jam movie that's why not just not put him in there? You know what I mean? Like you didn't have to put him in. You don't have to announce that we're canceling him and all. It's just don't put him in there. And I, I, I can't understand the comparison. There's so many shows and and things that are out there that are deeply disturbing and awful. But it's like let's let's kind of go after this character and. It's like, isn't that, isn't the art supposed to be protected? Isn't the, we're protecting that, right? Or not, you know? So for me, going into that, the Pepe Le Pew thing doesn't bother me as much as Eminem, you know? So it was said, and I knew how this was going to go, that they were trying to cancel Eminem. When really, Eminem has been trying, we've been trying to cancel that guy for the past like 20 years. You know, we have a guy that's hit every single problem head on. Every single one, this guy, when he was, when he's called one thing, you know, he ends up making a whole album about it. When he was called homophobic, he ended up performing with um, Elton John, 
you know, holding his hand and bringing it up. What else? I mean, and, and some people might go, oh, it's just an act or whatever, but he did it. So it's like, what do you want to do? And yes, I am an old millennial explaining or I'm, 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 I qualify as that because Eminem had a huge impact on me, you know, as a, as a young trashy boy, you know, and, you know, I related very, um, heavily with him too. And then on top of that, like with me and and my very diverse group of friends, I I kind of always got, I kind of was that outcast kid, you know, I was always the one that was a little odd, a little weird. And so I definitely relate, you know, to his message and to him, but it's like, good luck. You all tried to cancel somebody who's been, they've been, we've like our parents and our parents' parents, they've been trying to cancel that dude forever. It's like, good luck. And isn't the arts, like I said, supposed to be protected? Isn't, you know, the depictions of some of the things that he's rapped about and talked about, isn't that the point? You know, so like you have a guy who he's talking about um, where he's played an abusive uh, boyfriend, the perspective in one of the songs. And it's like that's helped a lot of people recognize what an abusive boyfriend is. Or, you know, where which I believe it was Rihanna said the same thing. She said, you know, she's like, it's helped a lot of people. And that was what one of the people were like, this is insane. You know, I can't believe, you know, that he would he would say this, you know, and do that. And it was because of this one line. Well, I mean, he trust me, he is way more. Wait till they listen to his original album. I love the way you lie in the sense deleted post. If she ever tries to <laughs> to fucking leave again, I'm going to tie her to the bed and set this house on fire. End quote. This very popular young person on TikTok said, yes, let's cancel him. And it just went insane. Not to realize that he's playing the part of the abusive boyfriend. So maybe you guys can understand what an abusive boyfriend is. You ever think about that? That it's part of art. It's part of expression. It's like a painting that you walk by that disturbs you. To some people, that painting might be disturbing. And to others, it might be what they needed to see. And with music, that's the beauty of music. It might be what you needed to hear. You ever think about that? Nope. So, the same goes for movies. So, there's plenty of movies out there that are deeply disturbing and plenty of movies that depict history and, and it's awful and it's uh, brutality. and But that lets us know. That lets us know what, what it was like so we don't ever have to go back there. That we have these people that are paid to pretend, that are paid to paint this cinematic picture for you so we don't ever have to go back. And that's why I think it's like we need freedom of expression. We need freedom of speech to be protected. We need people to be able to express themselves. Otherwise, all we have is oppression. We go back to that circle of oppression and oppressing, oppression and oppressing. And then it becomes a very dreary country. Communism. It essentially becomes a communist country. And you know, where freedom and and expression is being suppressed. And you don't want that. You super don't want that. So, I mean, to say the least, you don't want that. So, listen, I mean, I know it was a bit dry. I hope it didn't bore you to death. But I think that's the issue with cancel culture. It's a lot of young people, including people like, you know, my age and under, who are very unappreciative of life, very unappreciative, and, and have been saturated with the amenities and the comforts of life and now we're all looking for you know they're looking for ways that they can try to contribute to change something as do most adolescents as do most young people want to do and it's just it's not there start being more appreciative and you know start helping in real small ways active small ways you know we have a lot of people on social media talking and nobody's actually saying anything so listen i hope i didn't get too preachy i hope i didn't try to talk too wise i'm essentially a big-nosed idiot who still has a problem with spelling wednesday so take it or leave it now hell yeah or hell no 
weighted blankets. Now, I have a weighted blanket. It's a 15-pound weighted blanket, and I do enjoy it. I do like it. It is, it's, it's like a bunch of small cats laying on you. That's what I feel like. I feel like a, every time I have the weighted blanket on me, I do. I feel like a child on my mother's, on, on my mother's, and I'm the mother. However, I mean, how weighted, like when, when did they realize though, like what's too heavy is my question. I'd like to be the tester on that, you know? It was like 10 pounds, cool, 15, cool, 20 pounds, cool, you know, 25, you know, it's, you know, it's hard to get up, you know, and then it's like, 30, 40, it's like, okay, she can't breathe now. She's dead. You know, it's like, when when did they draw the line on the weight of the weighted blanket is my is my question. It's like, you know, after a while, they're like, hey, you know, in the meeting, guys, like, oh, all right, 45 pounds we found was too much. You know, she passed out in the middle of the night, you know? So it's like, I... I love weighted blankets. I got a 15 pound one. It's it's perfect. It's pretty good. 15, 20, I think would be good because I'm thick. It takes a lot to kind of make me feel, you know, stre- it makes the stress go down and all that. So I'm all, listen, I'm, I'm for the weighted blankets. I think the weighted blankets are dope. Give me the weighted blanket. And yeah, 67% of you, you know, said hell yeah. And uh, 33% said, hell no. And some of the comments were, it's like, oh, I feel like I'm being crushed. I feel claustrophobic. Um, I feel like I'm dying, which is the opposite of um, the anxiety relief. So, you know, maybe not, you know, do that. Now, the next one, which is something I had over the weekend, and I had to put it out there because people were asking me about it, Trulies. Now, the Truly Ice Teas. Now, when Trulies came out, I was drinking them before. It was cool. I've talked about it on the podcast before. I was drinking and everybody's making fun of me. Then all of a sudden, it just came out like a wildfire. I just saw the low-calorie drinks. Everybody's making fun of me because I got to watch my waistline because I'm a thick bitch and I eat M&Ms and, you know, Wendy's uh, Dave's Doubles. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to watch my waistline with what I drink. And I like I like the taste of it. It's like a faint, it's like a faint taste of fruit. It's like it could, it's like fruit that's passed on, ghost fruit. That's what's in Trulies is fruit that's been slain. It's been, it's dead. Okay. It's just hints, hints in your mouth hole. So the truly iced tea, I actually really like, I thought it was good. It's in like this, you know, it's a tea looking, but it's like a brownish bottle or brownish uh, can. It's pretty good. So I tried two of them and they get you lit up. And I heard that they have truly's that are going to come out. that are like 8%, but that'll get you lit up. You have like two or three of those. You are flying high and also still watching your waistline and that fat ass doesn't have to be like mine right now having trouble fitting to these new Adidas pants. So we have, to me, Trulies, you know, some people are, you know, it's like, why does it have to be everything? They're like, oh, I'm more of a white claw type of guy. Okay, cool. You're white. I like white claw too. I like them all. It's like cats and dogs. It's like, I like both. Why do I have to choose? I want a cat and a dog. Sorry. I like them both. The Truly Ice Teas. 27% said, hell, hell yeah. 73% of you said, hell no. Listen, I don't care. Screw all y'all. I like them. They are good. And how dare you until you try them? Dude, they were brand new. How are some of you hell gnawing those? Some of you guys got to live a little. You guys got to live. Some of you are just, you've, you've all changed. You guys got to live. So they're brand new. Get your asses out there. Try them. Then hell gnaw it. Some of the hell yeahs said, these are delicious. They tasted good. You guys are about experiencing life. Thank you. The next one, which is a shoe, a mid, mid-top mid Nikes. Now, those of you who hell nod this, this is the shoe that I shipped. I, uh, I got drunk and ordered. See, it's weird. When I, get, when I um, get drunk, I don't do mean things. You know that dude that, like, drinks too much, and they're like, they're like dude, just let him go. Let him go. He gets like that when he drinks too much vodka. He drinks like that when he gets Jaeger. And the next day he blames it on the Jaeger, not because he's an asshole. It drives me nuts. So the thing is, is that guy, I'm the opposite. I do nice things when I'm drunk. I do nice things like tell everybody that I love them or, hey, I just want to let you know you did a great job today. Or, hey, my niece calls and says she couldn't find the shoes that she wanted, so I ordered her a pair of shoes because I love her, and she does a really good job, and I made sure, and I asked my brother, and I asked him, has she been doing good in school? And he said yes, and she's been treating everybody really well and with respect, and she reads a lot. Guess what? 
she deserves a shoe, man. If she can't find shoes, I'm going to get her shoes, you know? So when I get drunk, which I was a little, a little lit up, I do nice things. So just keep that in mind. So if you guys, you guys see me out and I'm drunk, you know, chances are if you messaged me, I'd be like, you know what? You're a good guy. You know what? You're a nice, you're a nice person. Here's a $50 Visa gift card. So these are the very shoes that I actually got or that I did send. I did, I did take the picture. So listen, I love high tops. I'm a high top type of guy. I like, I don't like low tops or mid tops are okay, but I like the high tops. I've always have as a kid. When I was a kid, I had nine pairs of shoes. Seven of them were high top Nikes, all, all different sorts of colors. They weren't as crafty and cool as they are now, but I had nine. I had seven of them stolen from a party that I was having on Berry Street in Torrington. So I was having a party. This kid came over that I did not know. My buddy brought him. My buddy brought him. And he and the next day, my shoes were gone. So I told him in school when I saw him, I said, hey, man, my shoes are gone, man. All of them. They're gone. He was the only guy that was, on, that was at that party that I didn't know. I, I told, told him that in the, the middle, middle of science, science class. class. He gets up and says, what? He's freaking out. He's pissed. He gets up in the middle of science class. The teacher tells him to sit down. He says, no, and walks out. The next day was Saturday, so I wasn't at school. His sister called my girlfriend. My girlfriend called me and said, what did you tell him? And I went, what do you mean? And she goes, I said, somebody stole my shoes. Well, beat the kid within an inch of his life. The kid admitted to stealing all of the shoes and had already sold them for heroin. So I am, one, very proud of that guy. You did what you needed to do. Thank you. But, you know, you sold seven high-top, beautiful condition Nikes for heroin? Dude, come on. God. What the heck? At least share. But seriously. So, I mean, I used to love high-tops, but for a while I didn't buy one because, one, it reminded me of people who steal stuff for heroin. And, and, and that's my truth. So, <laughs> yes. So I told you that to tell you that, no, I don't like uh, mid tops. I like high tops, even though it reminds me of heroin. And um, I don't like low tops. So the mid tops, not my thing, although these, these ones specifically are. So I'm going to hell yeah, just because I do like them. And, oh, you pieces of shit. So 67% of you hell nod these bastards. And 33% said, hell yeah. Well, I'll let my niece know that next time. You sons of bitches. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, got hell no. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Adrian. These next two were a little bit more complicated for me because it's more of a question on how you say something. We're in New England. People say things stupid. Now, when you say maple syrup, do you say syrup or syrup? Because here's my take on that. I say maple syrup because I'm an adult and I'm, I mean, I'm not that smart, but I, but I say maple syrup. Some of the people who say syrup, syrup, I don't know what happened to you. What sort of trauma happened to you as a kid? Maybe you fell, you hit your head. Maybe somebody also said it wrong and scared you. So you said, now you say maple syrup, syrup. That's like too many R's, you know, or you are very special. I don't know what happened to you, but I'm just going to tell you that that's not the way you say it. It's syrup, okay? I still don't know how to spell Wednesday, but I can tell you how to say syrup. Feel me? So, yeah, 82% of you said it's syrup, not syrup. 18% said syrup. And I did have a talking to with some of you. Some of you guys need, you know, y'all need Jesus or something. You know, maple Jesus. The next one is caramel. 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 Not caramel. Caramel. So, caramel. Caramel. Why? You're adding the A. Don't add the A. You don't need to. I don't know where to put the H in Wednesday. Right? There's an H in there. Right? There's an H. There's an H somewhere. But I could tell you I know that you don't put an A in caramel. So, same thing. I think you're just trying to be fancy. You know, I think there's a part of you that says, you know, you say fancy shit. It's like, it's like a uh, sherbet and sorbet. You know what I mean? It's sherbet. I said the other day sorbet to piss people off and it did work, uh, but it's sherbet. 
it's sherbet. Sorbet sounds fancy. It, it's too fancy. You know what I mean? Y'all want some sherbet? Yeah, see, that's how I would say it. I wouldn't say sorbet. I still have a trouble. Some I still have trouble when people say uh, uh, dinner and diner. I know that's not. I'm just being real with you. I don't know. Sometimes, like I'll like I'll I'll go by and I see diner on the top of a diner, and I'm like, oh, that's how you spell diner, and it's not dinner. You know, I'm just being real with you because, you know, I'll be honest. Like, have I been dropped in my head? Yeah, I've taken a couple of punches to the face. Look at this nose. This nose is crooked goes this way. Benny Big Nose. My nose goes this way. It's been broken. I've flattened this nose right to my cheek and then bent it back. And actually, I, 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 I trained my friend. She was the one that, that uh, passed out. She passed out when I broke it back. I went, and it was just, she just fell, fell right on the ground. And I would too. But listen, you guys got to get your, you know, get your shit together and just know that it's sherbet, it's caramel, it's syrup. And another thing, if you say milk, it drives me nuts. Milk. It's milk. 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 I need to go pick up some milk. Yeah, see, I say milk. Yeah, if you say milk, that's with an E. That's wrong. Listen, I mean, enough. I mean, I'm just going to give you guys, we're going to go just do a spelling bee together. That would be hilarious to watch how freaking badly I spell shit. Oh, that'd be good. So, listen, I'm out of here. I got to go. I'm going to be canceled. I'm going to be canceled. The culture is going to cancel me. And um, listen, seriously, thank you all for liking, sharing, subscribing, and listening to me get, Me give you guys vocabulary, grammar advice, even though, like I said, Wednesday, you tricky bitch, I'm coming for you. All right, I'm out of here. Later, guys. <laughs>